Sure. Here, let me. Hey, folks, welcome to Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance Session, 25th of July here. Jeff is going to share, Jeff Krevich, one of our co-chairs, is going to share some ideas around creating a digital twin, something in combination with the Climate Action and Carbon Accounting Group. So, Jeff, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. So what this evolved out of is the carbon accounting systems out there today for our climate change, accumulating um, and determining what a company's carbon emissions are is all on the back end. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's all carbon accounting. It's how much have we can, um, CO2 we put in the air this past month, this past week, looking at trends, things of that way. And so they're all called climate accounting systems. And so here's a little bit different tack on it. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do here is uh, put together an architecture where a company can have a, uh, the hyperledger systems or projects. I'm not sure what they're calling because it is a project, but um, fabric, um, Bayesian, and so forth can be used as a technical reference architecture for a company. So if a company wants to say, look, we have to meet our, uh, Microsoft's a good one, meet our uh, climate goals where we state we're going to take all the carbon out of the air, we're going to be a net zero company, they have to start with their supply chains. So one of the things that they need to do is they have to simulate how to make a supply chain net zero in carbon emissions. In other words, let's all cumulate together with offsets using green energy and so forth. I'm shipping a car from, let's say, China to the Los Angeles port. No net, no, um, it's net zero carbon emissions, no positive carbon emissions across that supply chain. Now, is that feasible today? No. Um, but it's gonna to have to get there. And so um, the objective of this thing here is to show how a hyperledger project is gonna be on the front end of that where it can interactively measure in real time what your emissions are. So envision yourself as a carbon accounting professional or person in a, in a company and your supply chain or chains need to get net zero. They'll look at every step in the supply chain and say which ones emit carbon emissions and they'll have to look at remediation. How do we remediate this? Or what's our budget for the carbon the carbon emissions? So we say a single car coming across on the boat is 50 tons of CO2. How do we mitigate that with offsets, maybe switching the way we, we um, um, manage our supply chain and so forth. And so to do that, um, they have the carbon accounting systems that I've just mentioned before, where at the end of the day or end of the month, they accumulate all the carbon emissions and they report those and they try and offset those. Um, as we know from the supply chain group here that supply chains don't work the same way each time and um, things get changed, things are interactive. And so what we're saying here is <clears throat> we're going to have an upfront real time um, accounting of carbon emissions that go across a supply chain. So again, the, some of the stuff you can see on the screen isn't finished yet. Um, I couldn't finish yesterday. I had a cold yesterday and today, but I just noticed something I have to at the bottom here. Something here okay, in open yeah, source maybe. advantages. Yeah. Forget about that. But um, um, I'm going to switch this over to here. Um, and I'm not going to go through each one, but um, What's the value of a digital twin? You're going to need a digital twin, whether it's um, you know airplane engines, car braking systems. To this is a new um, new empirical way of measuring um, things interactively. Whether it's uh, erosion of a braking system, blades on a turbine on a on an engine, and also and it comes down to supply chains. Um, what are the emissions that are coming out? And so what they can do is if you look at the last um, bullet item, last two bullet items, is um, trying to get down to net zero and see where you stand on a very granular level. What, where are these emissions coming from? Um, interactively, what we can change if something starts somewhere is flooded. That's a good example. Right now, some of uh, the uh, uh, factory is flooded. I think it's in Germany that makes aluminum panels for Porsches, and it's the only supplier. So they can't get in there. So they're going, they're routing around. And so um, they're going to have more CO2 emissions. Also, they're going to have to revamp their, um, their risk management. So um, if you look at a digital twin um, and you read this, it 
the top part, it's interactive. Um, it allows you to do scenarios before you actually implement it. So if you get a new supply chain, what are the emissions? How do we move the product from A to location, or I should say location A to location B? Um, and you can do modeling of that. And you're not gonna be net zero now, but you, you're gonna see how well you're progressing against that and move it down. Again, this is all before you actually do anything in the climate accounting system. So what I've done so far on this is, um, first thing we have to do is come up with a conceptual architecture, a solution architecture, and a data architecture. And this is where we've got some of the climate folks and the climate accounting say very interested in looking at this. I, I didn't give a demo of the screen, but I talked at length in that meeting Tuesday. So we have a lot of people that are very interested in doing this. Uh, what their roles will be, I'm not sure, but they may come back with more, hopefully. Say we need to do this, we need to do this, but they're experts on uh, emissions tracking, how much there's yeah. standards out there for how much emissions come out of a ocean line or a plane, um, how you generate offsets interactively. That's a big one with the digital twin. And so I am generating more CO2 emissions than I want to at the same time in real, in real time. You can go and do trading in real time and fix it and get it down toward net zero, um, all against a scenario. So I have a screen here of the solution architecture. I know there's a lot on here. Um, this is the digital twin. And what you have today is all the way over on the right is the carbon accounting system. And this is what you have out there today. So you've got um, trading market, you've got global cl uh, climate accounting systems that, that account for scope one, two, and three. But then you've got, of course, the experts who, uh, Know what emissions should be adjustments they make manually in uh, in this case there's going to be ai in the middle and so everything to the left of that blue one is the digital twin and you can see where all the data comes in again there may be more added to this the digital twin sits in the middle and collects data real time iot data weather systems conflicts so on forth and so forth and the twin has a model set up a baseline that says this is how, many, this is how our emissions are on the supply chain. Um, we're gonna, they may not be net zero, but we're gonna be this close. We're gonna buy offsets. So if you look at the bottom right, you'll see interactively, they can purchase offsets in a trading market. As a matter of fact, they can, there's ways of generating credits in the supply chain. I don't have that on here, but you can sell at the same time. So this Digital twin in the middle is looking at your supply chain as your car or your commodity is coming across an ocean or land. And it's getting lots and lots of IoT data. This technology with IoT data is here today. Um, and it pours in and digital twin measures against a baseline to say, this is where we had planned on emitting um, CO2. Up front, we want to correct it. We don't want to wait till we get done a month later and say, we're off, we're off. What do we want to do um, to make adjustments? This is doing interactively and so the, the real key is up at the top there's simulation, simulation output where a new supply chain will come up and they start looking at, you know, the, the experts, climate experts who do accounting will say, what do we need to do to modify our emissions or actually say reduce them? And so they'll use AI experts um, and they'll plug that into the digital twin, which is really going to be on the blockchain. Um, and as the digital twin is running, it's collecting these data from every little segment of a supply chain from here to here, from here to here, and it's monitoring this and watching it. And when things get away from them, um, over on the on the right, the, the green and the yellow, let's start the green and the blue, is where you do mitigation um, live in real time. And um, you do, do simulations and just keep running this thing over and over and over itself. And what you get at the end is a way to model and to mitigate at a granular level in real time uh, carbon emissions from uh, your supply chain. So that's where we are now. Um, there's a lot more, especially on the data architecture that we go into here um, with units and so forth. Um, and you quite, I don't know if there's only a few of us on the phone, but um, I'm gonna go through some slides here. You're gonna see a work, a work process I put together uh, what the scope of the digital twin is. And this is all the activities here that are gonna go into firming this up. And so you can see this is the collection integration of the data. We have some of this all on the, on the diagram. Um, how this works in real time. 
Um, as you can see, this is all the effort that's the real-time dashboards, reports. The scenario planning is a big one up front. There's no way to really do scenario planning at all. And I've talked to some of the folks that looked on the internet, and I've talked to folks on the time climate <laughs> accounting group, and there is nothing out there that does this. Nothing. Nobody has seen anything that does. You can do scenario planning in some of these systems. That, again, it's carbon accounting. You're, you're accounting for it after the fact. You're not watching it in real time. There is nothing that anybody's heard of. I've searched high and low. Um, so putting something in real time up front, um, which um, isn't too difficult in the sense that the technology yeah, is there, it's just are the behaviors there. What's that? When you when you were talking with people or the climate kind people, what kind of lag time is there? Because I'm I'm getting I'm one of my takeaways is that this is all we, with digital twin we can make this more real time. Is the lag time like 24 hours? Is nope. It, is it no, nope. the lag time is uh, based upon companies. And I, I when I worked in another company, it was the same thing. The lag time is when they have to report. Could be a month. Could be six months. Okay. It's not 24 so, so, hours. So it's it's significant. So you you know. Yeah. It, it's not like a day. It's not like forty-eight yeah. hours or anything like that. Even if you mess up for a week, right? You you messed up for a week, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you have messed up, there's no granularity anywhere to say, okay, where in that supply chain did we run over? Um, they just have input data from the IoT devices, but they don't know where. And so, a supply chain has got many many segments in there, and it could be just some way of moving a truck from a warehouse to the port. They use some truck, they could use DEV, they use some diesel truck, and they could they can't see this today. And they, so they don't know where the corrective action should be. So they they just they're just accumulating CO2 uh, emissions. Also um some other greenhouse gas emissions, but um the lag time is enormous today. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you'll see, uh, the I've got team something team. here. I pulled off the internet. Yes. I didn't even know Microsoft owned LinkedIn. Um, but um, this is something that even comes like Microsoft is on the hook to do this. Um, where they are, I don't know. But uh, to have, a, you know, <clears throat> again, when it comes to the, back to the hyperledger value, um, I think everybody knows what a reference architecture is, technical reference architecture, um, where you want to, you have a business situation and to solve it, we have this tech, these technologies that we use. In this case, um, we're trying to show is hyperledger projects, where the advantages are using hyperledger, um, what are some of the technical components they have that give an advantage over other components, other systems. That's where we're going to need more of the architect folks from uh, um, hyperledger. But um, that's what reference architecture is. So as companies go on, come on board, it's kind of like SAP became a reference architecture for ERP systems back in the 90s. You want to, you want to get these hundreds of systems, accounting systems together. How do we do this? They use SAP. Um, that was their technical reference architecture. Hyperledger projects is a little bit more expansive than that because you can insert other products in there. But yeah. the idea behind this at the end of the day is here's a solution architecture for this. Here's how hyperledger projects enable this. If you just install these components, tie them together, um, you now have a supply chain visible in your supply chain through a digital twin, which is not necessarily new technology, digital twin, but you have this capability now to measure in real time yeah. where these emissions are coming from. And also you can demonstrate we have supply chains that have net zero emissions. Yeah. You know, the so climate economy group says if you could if you could demonstrate that uh, yeah. through the system that'd be huge and so um, yeah. as you can see I need to formulate the, the uh, work plan a little bit more here um, as far as what we need to put this thing all together right. there's a lot right. here that that's where I was going to go is you know what's needed I mean, I'd, I'd like to see Victor since you're on here um, Victor if you have any thoughts you like this idea something that you think is valuable or not sure and you're just here to learn or whatever um feel free to yeah share. I'm, I'm here to learn and i do know that carbon recording and obviously hyperlighter being prominent uh blockchain solutions definitely is a good, good uh fit for this for this application um yeah that 
that's and, and I sorry that's how I know. Um, I see a lot a lot of the detailed uh, data flows. It's very very sophisticated. So definitely, uh, sounds good good stuff. Yeah, good, Victor. What what's your uh, what's your purview normally? Are you a technologist person? Or are you a supply chain expert? Or are you a planner? Or are you a um, mostly technology. I'm no, actually I'm 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 technology person. So, uh, not really. Uh, I'm I'm just learning uh, hyperledger. Uh, so for, as far as hyperledger, I'm not that technical. I I know what it does. Trying to learn the ecosystem. Uh, That's good. Concepts. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Okay. Beautiful. Well, we could use your learnings that you pick up on hyperledger for this, Albert. Yeah. It, Victor, you're you're. Uh, you're, you're welcome to join us in future if you uh, want to put your email in the chat. I mean, we can, or you can add yourself to the list, um, the email list here, future. Because I think what we're planning on doing is September, September fifth. Is that right, Jeff? We're going to go into this in more detail. Yeah, I have a yeah. month to clean some of this up. Yeah, I, I have the meeting on my calendar. Okay, good, good. So September fifth, I think, is the next time we're going to take the month of August off, and then we're going to go. I think. Jeff, you're right on the, you know, what's what's the need? What do we need? It sounds like we need to need some architecture folks. We probably need some coding folks. Right? Retirement accounting folks. Um, Retirement accounting folks. We'll need we'll need some uh, some data folks too, right? Yeah, the carbon accounting right. folks are right. mostly with, um, uh, all those ERPs and warehouse execution systems and warehouse management systems and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so it will. Um, at the end of the day, I don't know when this is, but if we, if we carry this whole thing through and we do this, um, we want to do a demonstration, which means we have to put the system up in test mode. Yeah. Um, so we need an instance of Fabric, probably I'm going to need Indy. Um, again, some of the work, some of the work processes, the, the climate accounting group isn't very technical, and so, um, the work processes around this, they'll fill that in. So um, yeah. they um, they do a lot of measurement today by hand, by the way. That's another thing, which is difficult. <laughs> oh, really? And, <laughs> yeah, because there's um, there's a lot going around the standards area around this, even carbon emission tokens and this whole standardization. And so um, there's things going on where a company can measure its CO2 emissions coming out of a truck that goes down the road 100 miles and deliver parts to another factory, and they'll do actual IoT and they'll look at the emissions and go, you know, the standard is actually a lot less than this, so we'll, uh, we'll report the less one. So there, there's there's a lot of that going on out there. Um, but um, um, okay, so measurement so that's, so that's not good. No, yeah, so that's where the, those groups. Um, Climate accounting, climate accounting standards group, that's where they all fit into all this stuff. So uh, where we're on the supply chain front saying, you know, when I started my talk on uh, Tuesday, it was just very, I didn't have the slide presentation. I said, you know, you're talking about carbon accounting, you're talking about supply chain. <laughs> yeah. It's supply chain. Well, and the, they the all agree to that. Um, and so let's see what we can do on a granular level. You know, we did that somewhat. Um, remember we did a demo of a supply chain moving coffee from Ethiopia to um, um, New York. What was that like three, four months ago? I gave that demo, that piece of software. Um, um, it wasn't. It wasn't the trade finance. Oh yeah, uh, I can't remember what. Remember it was. that that whole supply chain? Yeah, it's out. It's out there on the uh, on YouTube. Okay. Um, it's just, that's not what the technology underneath was in this, but it was, it was the exact idea. Remember screens would pop up and AI would say, we're going to run a risk management. We're going to ship it, the product this way instead of this way. And yeah. we got New York as a traffic jam. AI came up and said, we're going to ship it this way, which turned out to be a negative because the thing got robbed, but there was all these IOTs coming out. I mean, it was, I remember there was an IOT, um, emission budget, the cost now, budget. I may, I may have missed that one. It's. No, you were you were in it. It was uh, I can send you a link. It was that Python. It was that it was that blockchain written in Python. Wow. Okay. Wow. I got too. It, too much it ran for about a half hour. 
uh, on the screen. Um, I'm yeah. not remember how many people were on there. There's been on YouTube. There's been hundreds of people that have looked at it. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll I'll find it. I'll find it. But it's along this line, except um, it, that wasn't using Hyperledger. It was just again, it was a desktop demo. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't want to get too far in front of this whole thing because um, there's multiple six or interested parties who put together an architecture and a plan to demo it. Then. Uh, um, We'll need some infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's 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 uh put a put a bow on on this. Is there anything else that you wanted to share here, Jeff, or anything that you think you need, or anybody who listens to this uh, um on YouTube here? Certainly, over the next month, you and I can chat. And Alicia, Victor, if you want to get involved, I mean, this is this could be a fun project. You're more than welcome to just uh. Raise your hand whenever you'd like. <laughs> Send us an email um, on it, as well as anybody who's listening on the uh, on YouTube here. As uh, as Jeff said, there's going to be a number of different opportunities here to bring this into play, and uh, it, we I think we got a hard one here, Jeff. <laughs> Blockchain and digital twin together. <laughs> Yeah, well, the digital twin will be blockchain. Um, yeah, you know, especially fabric, which has multi channels that handle lots of IoT data. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think over the next month, I'm going to uh, put together, firm this up, and say, what is it we need from other Good. areas to show this? And so get Good. it lined up to say, here it is. What do we need to define this further? Um, to make sure the communication is out to people to say, um, this is not an accounting system. This is up. This is where the meeting on Tuesday went really well because people thought it was another accounting system. So no, 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 no. This is out in front. Yeah. yeah. This is real time granularity. I look at your supply chain, and yeah. somebody asked a good question, saying, "Are you saying then that you are? I don't remember who said that you're going to be able to design something that you just plug in, and now our emissions are net zero." <laughs> I was like, "No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. no. The no. world doesn't work." There. Physics doesn't work that way. What it will do is allow you on a granular level to yeah. uh, look at exactly what my supply chain um, emissions are, where in the supply chain are granular, right. where are they coming from, and is it possible to mediate that? Maybe not today, maybe in 10 years, when that person says, oh, now I understand. So I, I've had to change my, just my one question, just change the slides yeah, up front, to make sure that communication's yeah. right. Yeah, now it's, now it's actionable information in real time as yeah. opposed to, reporting and then you do something and to your point the granularity you know you're not having to tease out well is this the reason is this the reason is that the reason is this other thing the reason now i'll have some level of understanding for where it actually yeah. came based on all this sensor data that's if out i was there. a software salesman that's what i would say because i've dealt with them in the past yeah plug this in you're net zero oh great yeah. <laughs> yeah i was a software salesperson come on jeff <laughs> uh -oh. maybe i even know that don't <laughs> Be real, man. Okay. <laughs> so why, why don't we wrap up here um, with, with this? It, and Jeff, thank you very much for sharing today. Um, let's look at, I think, you know what, um, September 5th, and we'll have a kickoff. And I like your yeah. idea of what else is needed, and you have the basics. And like I said, I'm happy to help here over the next month, you as you pull this together. And then maybe we can look at, too, doing a joint kickoff call on the September 5th or whatever with the climate action folks. Yeah, and on Tuesday, there was a guy from Carbon Sustain. That is a company that sells carbon tracking software. Yeah. One called Hedera tracking Hedera software. And so I, over the call, I said, does this seem like something that's feasible? You know, we were investigating a potential project. We're not there yet, but does this make sense to even do this? And across the board, it was like, yeah. Yeah, and cool. I asked the carbon sustain guy, the guy from Hedera, is it? Is it Hedera? 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 Yeah. And they said, no, we're we're the back end accounting. We don't have anything like this. Yeah. Okay. Good. So Good. okay. Well, let, yeah, this is the design. So. Good. Well, let, well, let, let, let's close here for uh, today, Victor. Thanks for uh, joining real time, folks who are listening on YouTube. Thanks for uh, joining and listening and uh felicia hopefully she gets better here and i hope she's she better too oh well, no maybe not maybe i'm oh. reading into it that she wasn't able she had something come up today so she couldn't join so jeff i hope you get better
there. I feel somewhere. a lot better. I feel a lot better today. You sound you sounded better as you kept on talking. You were getting into it. Well, I was kind of falling asleep before the meeting, <laughs> and then waking up again. There you go. You're so, waking up. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end this now. Okay, uh, everyone. Enjoy, yep. Good luck, uh, Jeff. Getting better, and uh, Victor, yep. have a great rest of the day. And anybody who's listening uh, on YouTube, have a great rest of the day. And we'll see you back on these webinars at least in uh, September. Bye for now. Thanks.